Hey everyone, it's Rose and that's Cher. And today I wanted to make a video talking to you guys about cellulitis and what causes it and the treatments and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so um, again, like I've said in the other videos I've done talking about medical stuff, I'm not a doctor. I am a physical therapist. I have a doctorate in physical therapy, but not a doctor. I'm not trying to diagnose anybody with anything, not trying to do anything like that. Um, I am solely talking about cellulitis in the sense of what I was able to research and my experience working with patients who have had cellulitis before. Um, again, um, I've talked about it in other videos. Um, when I had my first physical therapist job, I worked in a hospital and I actually did wound care. The physical therapists were the ones that did the wound care. So I do have some experience with wound care too, which is kind of involved in cellulitis. But anyway, let's get into it. What is cellulitis? Um, cellulitis is a potentially serious bacterial skin infection. Um, the affected skin appears swollen, red, and is typically painful and warm to the touch. So um, it's just an infection where bacteria gets into the skin and it causes irritation in the skin, like redness and swelling. Um, any kind of inflammation in the body, a lot of times if you touch that area, it's warm to the touch. Like if people have gout or like an injury to like their knee or their ankle, if you touch that area, a lot of times it's warm just from the inflammation process. Cellulitis usually affects the skin of the lower legs, but can happen on the face, arms, and other areas. Um, I, when I've worked with patients who have had cellulitis, I've seen it on people's faces, I've seen it on their arms, but a majority of the time that I've worked with people, it has been on their legs. Cellulitis occurs when a crack or break in your skin allows bacteria to enter. So this is like any kind of like break or crack in your skin, like a scratch or a, a wound of some kind is allowing um, a bacteria to um, work its way into your skin. If cellulitis is left untreated, the infection can spread to your lymph nodes, bloodstream, and become life-threatening. So like any infection, if you don't treat it, you can um, go septic, go into septic shock, leads to really bad things. You don't want any kind of infection to spread or cross your body, obviously. So you want it treated as soon as you um, possibly can have it treated or as soon as you possibly know that you have any kind of infection. The signs and symptoms of cellulitis is a red area of skin that tends to expand. And what that means is like a lot of times if you go into the hospital and you have any kind of like wound or injury to your body and there's a red area around it of like swollenness and irritation, um, if they're suspecting that it's going to keep you know, the infection is going to spread, they'll take like a marker and actually outline that area of redness and monitor it to see if the redness expands past that original marker mark. So that's what it, that's what, um, it means when they say um, the red area tends to expand. Other signs and symptoms, swelling, tenderness, pain, warmth, fever, red spots, and blisters. And the blisters is what I was talking about as far as um, wound care goes. Sometimes because like you're your leg gets swollen, it can start like seeping um, liquid, which can cause blisters. It can also, and then when the blisters open, it can cause wounds, creating more room for um, bacteria to enter your body. It's important to identify and treat cellulitis early because the condition can spread rapidly through your body. So like we, like I had said earlier, you can get staph infection or, you know, go septic. And that all leads to not fun things. What causes cellulitis? Um, cellulitis occurs when bacteria, and the two most common bacteria that I were able to find that would cause cellulitis are Streptococcus and Staphylococcus. Sorry if I'm saying those wrong. Um, it's when those kinds of bacteria enter through a break in the skin, again, like a cut or a scrape or something. Um, the kinds of injuries, for example, would be a recent surgery, like if you have an incision from getting some kind of surgery, cuts, puncture wounds, and ulcer on the foot. Like a lot of times, um, if you have diabetes, you can get diabetic ulcers on your feet or on your toes. So that would be a, a risk for infection. Um, athlete's foot, foot or dermatitis. Um, and one thing I, I wanted to point out here because Amber Lynn said that cellulitis isn't um, caused by being overweight or obese, people can be carriers, carriers of the bacteria. So people can just naturally on their skin carry around um, streptococcus bacteria or staphylococcus bacteria. Um, 
and they can actually have no signs or symptoms of being sick at all. It's like um, they say people can carry around like the strep, like how people get strep throat, they can be carriers for that virus or that bacteria or whatever. And like you can catch it from other people or other people who have, who carry that disease, but actually aren't sick in the moment and don't. It's also like, um, like you know how people get cold sores, sores and it's herpes, the herpes virus. People can carry that without having any symptoms of like a cold sore or whatever and pass that on to somebody like by sharing a drink or, you know, a kiss or whatever. So it's the same with cellulitis. Anyone can carry it and then anyone can catch it from them. So meaning that it doesn't necessarily mean an obese or an overweight person is going to catch, always be the one with cellulitis. It can happen to anyone. Some risk factors for getting cellulitis. And this is where the being overweight and obesity does come play into it. Being obese and overweight is a risk factor for getting cellulitis, along with any kind of injury, a weakened immune system. And um, there are some diseases that people have that can affect your immune system. Those would be uh, diabetes, leukemia, HIV or AIDS. Um, also certain medicines can weaken your immune system. So. And another thing I wanted to point out is that um, Amberlynn being almost 600 pounds has a weakened immune system. It, it seems to me a lot of times she's sick or has some kind of cold. Um, she's not getting proper nutrition, which can affect your immunity to certain things um, and how well your body is able to fight off diseases. Lymphedema is also a risk factor, which she has come out and said that she thinks that she has. Um, skin conditions such as eczema, athlete's foot, and shingles, all of those kinds of diseases can cause cracks or breaks in your skin where the infection could come in. Um, having a history of cellulitis increases your chances of getting it again, as well as obesity, which I already talked about. Um, recurrent episodes of cellulitis may damage the lymphatic system and cause lymphedema. So lymphedema is a risk factor for getting cellulitis and cellulitis is also, um, can also lead to getting lymphedema. Um, which I didn't know and I didn't find in my research in my lymphedema video. So there you go. A doctor will likely be able to diagnose cellulitis by looking at your skin, but may suggest blood tests or other tests to rule out other conditions. So yeah, a lot of times just looking at your leg or wherever it is that you believe you might have cellulitis, a doctor is going to be able to tell you yes or no, just looking on it. You don't have to go through any special testing. Cellulitis is usually treated with oral antibiotics. Unless it's really bad and you require hospitalization, like if, if you don't catch it in time and it spreads and spreads throughout your body, that's when you may end up needing uh, IV antibiotics or something a little bit stronger. Like how Amberlynn has mentioned that in high school she ended up being hospitalized. My guess is it just didn't get caught in time and it spread and the uh, oral antibiotics weren't effective enough. One more thing I wanted to talk about in this video, and I can do another video on it, um, a little bit more in depth if that's something people would be interested in. There's been question of how common bladder infections are in comparison to UTIs. And what I have found in my research, this is what I was able to find on the Google machine, um, which I'm not saying everything is um, always right on the internet, but I really do try to go to reputable sources. Um, when I'm doing these kinds of videos. And yes, I do work in the healthcare system. I had somebody that was saying like, hey, if you don't work in healthcare, make sure someone looks at it before you go spreading a bunch of misinformation. I try to be as educated as possible and speak on my experience. So this is where this is coming from as far as the UTI thing is concerned, um, as well as everything else. A UTI can refer to any infection in your urinary tract. That would include your ureter, your urethra, your bladder, and your kidneys. So what I found is that um, a bladder infection is a type of UTI. So a UTI would refer to an infection in any part of that, ureter, urethra, bladder, kidney. Um, but a bladder is a more specific type, a bladder infection is a more specific type of a UTI. And the most common UTI is a bladder infection, is what I was able to find in my research. A bladder infection, a UTI, it becomes more serious when it spreads and it spreads into your kidneys. Um, again, a UTI normally is treated with oral antibiotics unless it becomes too bad and then it's treated with IV antibiotics. 
Um, in my research and in working with people that have had UTIs, a lot of older people get UTIs. Um, the most common f way to get a UTI or the, the most that I've seen is just poor hygiene in the area, allowing bacteria to enter your urethra. Um, which is why women get them more commonly than men because theirs is like right in the area where if you wipe the wrong way, you can get bacteria. Um, e. coli is the bacteria that most of the time causes a UTI and that can just sit on your skin. It's in your rectum, um, you know, etc. So that's how it would get into your urethra. And if you're not diligent with your hygiene down there, um, you're more prone to get UTIs. Another thing that can happen is if you're someone that is experiencing incontinence um, and you end up needing a catheter like that's inserted into your urethra, um, that opens up a way for bacteria to enter into there and, um, and you can end up with a UTI. Another thing I wanted to mention about UTIs is that a lot of times if they get, if they aren't diagnosed and treated in the older population, they can cause um, increased confusion and like dementia like symptoms almost people get really confused and really like lethargic and out of it and um, as soon as their UTI is treated they're like back to normal so that's something that can ca that can be caused by UTIs just a change in your cognitive function um, which is another possibility why Amberlin is kind of declining in that way which I talked about in regards to sleep apnea in a couple of videos ago. Sometimes um, the oral antibiotics don't work and then that is why uh, people end up in the hospitals for UTIs and requiring IV antibiotics. That was kind of <laughs> off the cuff. I didn't do a ton of research on UTIs. If that's something people are interested in or want to hear more about, let me know um, in the comments and I can do some more research on that and talk a little bit more about it. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in hearing more from me, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I upload. I always leave my Twitter and Instagram linked down below so you can follow me over there if you'd like. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Say bye, share. Bye. <laughs> bye.